the Homebuyer Town Hall Corona. My name is Jenny Gonzalez with Keller Williams Corona. My license number is 01249788. I've been licensed since 1998. My cell phone number is 951-316-0374. I'm with Keller Williams Corona, and I am excited because today is my first show. And we're gonna dive into some market statistics and we have a special city council member for our show today. And also we have a wonderful sponsor, Eric Frazier with First Bank, who will be joining us shortly later, is our sponsor for today's show. So let's get to commercial and then we'll come back. We will get to our show. Technology should be simple. Technology should be beautiful. This is the Smart Home Advantage system. Smart Home Advantage is easy enough for anyone to use, no matter how old you are. With Bluetooth touchless disarming, you can leave your phone in your pocket. Smart Home Advantage securely authenticates you, preparing your home for your arrival. Smart Home Advantage controls your entire home with an intuitive, elegant touchscreen that looks great on the wall. It uses intelligent automation to make things easier when you are home. And you can customize the photo frame to show off your latest family adventure. And when you leave again, Smart Home Advantage knows you're gone. And we'll lock your doors, arm your encrypted security sensors, close your garage door, adjust your thermostat, and turn off your lights, making your home secure and energy efficient. With LTE, a built-in router, panel camera, and more, Smart Home Advantage is the most advanced, easy to use, security and smart home platform available. Smart Home Advantage, all in one, always connected, always innovating. Want to keep up with the current developments happening in the world of real estate? The Real Estate Roundtable, hosted by Eric L. Frazier, is a show you do not want to miss. The show features a panel of VIP agents who are passionate about helping people. It is what they do best. They discuss today's hot topics, latest market updates and trends, the panel also conducts interviews with prominent figures in the industry. New episode every Friday live on Facebook and replay on the Power Is Now YouTube channel. market update. I want to give you some in-depth details on what's going on in the market today because it's absolutely phenomenal. We are going nuts in Corona. It is just not cooling off at all. We are at a median list price at $797. That is up to over $25,000 from just over a week and a half ago. And the average per square foot is $317 per square foot. That is about the same as what we had before, but that is still pretty high. Our days on market are up from zero days to seven days. We're now to 18 to 45 days. And 25% of the listings over the last week in the MLS and Corona had price decreases. That is why is where we have these price decreases because we were overpricing our market in Corona. And also our inventory is super, super low. We're down to 170 units of single family units for sale and our median rent. Now I wanna to talk to you renters out there. The median rent in Corona is $3,100. You can get a house payment for that. If you have any questions regarding rates that are still really low, that will be going up at some point in time, now is the time to purchase. Now is also the time to sell, why? Because you need to take that equity and put it into another home. And that rate that you have for that other home is the payment that you're going to have. If you wait till the rates go up, yes, you may get more for your house, 
but you're also going to be paying for more in your rate when you purchase your new home. So that's a wrap up of what's going on in Corona. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. My number is 951-316-0374. And of course, my website is JennyGSellsHomes.com. Now we're going to transition to our special guest. His name is Wes Speak, and he's a vice mayor of the city of Corona. He was elected in November of 2018. He's the first council member for Corona's fifth district, which, can run, which is South Corona, Eagle Glen, and Dos Lagos. He's lived in Corona since 1980. He attended Corona High School and graduated in 1986. He's got an associate's degree from Riverside Community College, Bachelor's of Science and Business Administration, with an emphasis in management from the University of Redlands and has a certificate in land use and environmental planning from the University of California. He previously served on the Board of Trustees for Corona Public Library, Corona Task Force for the SR91 project, which is our major freeway, the 91 freeway, Circle City Substation Task Force, former member of the Greater Corona Traffic Alliance, and is a graduate of the Corona Chamber of Commerce Executive Leadership as a board member of Corona Parks Foundation and Riverside Community College District Foundation. He has specialized in the Riverside County Transportation Commission, State 91 Advisory Committee, League of California Cities for Housing, Community, and Economic Development, and the Western R Riverside County Regional Conservation Authority. His goal is to emulate our city's motto, to cherish our past, to plan our future. Welcome, Wes, speak to the Home Buyer Town Hall Corona. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks for the, the invitation. Uh, one of my favorite things to talk about is, is the city of Corona and second favorite is uh, home ownership. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks for invite the invitation. Thank you so much. This program is going to educate a lot of people and hopefully it'll improve um, what's going on in Corona and we can kind of tackle some issues and maybe bring up some issues that maybe we can tackle together and then we can educate the community as well. So my first question is, um, as for the um, incentives we were talking about, what kind of incentives do we have for workers and for businesses to come to Corona since we're seeing so, so many people moving out of the state and out of Corona to go to some outlying areas? I think um, for for new home buyers, we, we don't have a lot, unfortunately, with the uh, the elimination of redevelopment and some of those those uh, and funding at the state level. There isn't a lot of that. However, on the uh, business side, uh, we have a Team Corona concept. It's a concept where basically, if you're a business and you want to relocate in Corona, we give you a single point of contract a contact that will walk you through every process you could. We hook up, hook you up with brokers. We um, we have uh, if you're going to be doing TIs, you're going to be doing any kind of work in the city at all. We have a single point of contact that walks you through the system, and then um, can it connect you with. Uh, uh, you know, the incentives you can get from Southern California Edison. There are some uh, uh, business incentives from the state that are still available. And, and we do that all the time with folks. In fact, even on some of the workforce development, we can cover part of uh, part of your workers pay. We can uh, cover um, a purchase of equipment and uh, sub substantial discounts on uh, utilities. That's amazing. And I know that a lot of people really, you know, when they think about the Corona, they, you know, they're hearing, just few things. They don't know a whole lot about Corona. They don't know the history of Corona. They don't know, you know, what we've been through with regards to our infrastructure and all the building that we've done. You know, as a town, when my husband moved here in 1966 as a three-year-old, you know, there were only 15,000 people. And now we have over 153,000 people. So I know it's been a challenge with regards to, you know, keeping everybody happy at the same time as trying to do infrastructure, you know, all the complaints with all the construction and things like that. So how has it been? I mean, I remember when I first started following you when you were going to the city council meetings and talking about the congestion and talking about the problems your neighbors were having, and you really were an activist for the community that you live in. And that's why you, I, that's why I know you were elected to office. So tell me, you know, how you kind of came to that. Well, uh, thank you, Jenny. Thank you for, for mentioning that. And you're right. Um, I, I, I've lived in Corona since 1980. My parents drug me here kicking and screaming from Orange County. 
um, in, in, uh, in 1980. And I wasn't super happy when I got here because I, it just didn't look like, didn't feel like where I came from. Uh, but I've grown to love it. And, I, and I've been here for you know, 40 plus years. Um, <clears throat> and you're right. One of those things, I think Corona has been a, the, the victim of success, both in, in geography um, but also, uh, you know, I say it, it's, we benefited from it a lot. We, we've captured a lot of Orange County residents, captured a lot of Orange County businesses that it wanted to relocate. Um, but our infrastructure has it lagged, uh, uh, lagged a lot. In fact, uh, you know, when I started going to city council meetings and, and advocating for residents, I really wanted to focus on how best we could, um, uh, you know, slow development in a way that, that didn't stop it, because I think that that's, that's a bad thing. Um, but at the same time, it, it uh, prioritized what our investments were on the infrastructure side. So when I was elected in 2018, my colleagues um, at the time voted to place me as the city's representative on RCTC, that's the Riverside County Transportation Commission. And uh, that commission's goal is uh, to build uh, highways and, and uh, aid in road construction throughout the county. And uh, the two biggest projects I think that have happened in, in Corona has been the, uh, the 91 express lanes, which added two lanes in each direction from the Riverside County line to uh, the 15. And now the 15 express lanes project, which added um, two lanes from the 60 down to uh, Cahalco. Um, now those projects, when they were done, they were really only about 60% complete of uh, projects that really needed to happen. So over the last three years, I've been very proud of the fact that we've able to complete a lot of projects that, that were left out of the original plan. Those are infrastructure or interchange projects on the 15. Um, and in uh, our latest project that, that was just approved is a, um, uh, an auxiliary lane that'll happen from Cahalco to, um, to Wirrick, which will add in some of that, that crush that people see down of that Cahalco crush is, is as I, I've said in many public meetings, soul crushing in some ways, but um, some relief is coming. That project will be complete in September of next year. So I'm very excited uh, that that project will carry forward. And then the southerly extension of the toll lanes from Cahalco all the way down to 74 should start um, shortly after that. So we'll, we'll see some relief. But, you know, um, I, I always tell people, I want to be, I will always be honest with you. I'll, I'll always tell people that, that, um, the amount of traffic and how fast it takes to build uh, infrastructure is will always be a challenge. Um, so where we can build, you can build a house a lot faster than you can build a freeway improvement. Um, so one of the things that the city has done and, and, and through, through um, my colleagues and I have got together and work with our economic development department is to come up with a, a live work Corona concept. Um, and it's, you know, live work Corona and coming full circle in the circle city. So what we're going to be doing is, is not just the traditional economic development where we're looking to bring businesses in and, and have their employees come. We're going to be looking and really targeting commuters and those folks that are still having to go to Orange County and go to LA and finding jobs for them that pay them the same amount, You know, finding incentives for those businesses to hire these people and to grow. And at the same time, the idea is pretty simple. It's basically the city acting as kind of a recruiting firm. Um, and uh, we have data that that we can track where people go and and what what you know what jobs they do at least the categories. So we're going to target a couple of categories. One, the first one probably being nurses, um, and nurses and doctors in the healthcare field. We have a very fast growing um, healthcare field downtown with uh, the hospital, City of Hope. Um, uh, we have a, a couple brand new buildings that are going to be occupied by a full suite of doctors and nurses, and I think it's about 60,000 square feet, fantastic space, um, top-notch cancer doctors from, from Orange County that are becoming to Corona. And what we're going to be doing is targeting people who are making that drive now and finding ways to incentivize them to stay in Corona. We want them, we want you to live here and work here. Um, and, and so we're, we're going to target those, those areas first um, and then reach out to other areas. So you know, if we find there's 100 transportation engineers that live in Corona, I'm going to go talk to a transportation engineering company and say, hey, I have 100 people that live in either Corona or Western Riverside County that will love for you to be here. And, they, and they're all willing, they've all raised their hand and said, I don't want to drive anymore because the, it's, it's not going to get better in the long term. And, uh, you know, we have, we're working with our, our um, new office space that we have at Dos Lagos. It's brand new, class A. I mean, literally, it looks like it's downtown LA. It's so beautiful. 
um, looking at expanding some of our other office um, office offerings in different parts of the, the place and at the same time building more industrial because we're seeing that as a huge impact of um, uh, a, a huge, a huge short, shortfall that we have that we really need to have industrial space built. In fact, we built a million square feet off of Cahalco and, and Temesco, Temesco Canyon, and it's almost all sold. Um, and, and so the, the area is booming. We need people, but we want those people to, to live here. And we want them to live in homes that, that, that we're also building. We have homes that are being built off of, off of Bedford. We're looking at ways to, uh, to, find, to really find really good uh, uh, infill opportunities maybe build a little bit of housing downtown to kind of capitalize on our mall um, refurbishment that we're going to be doing over the next couple of years. Um, so we're excited about, I'm very excited about the next couple of years in Corona. And I, 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 I love it here. Um, I, I never want to leave. And, and I, I always tell people that I meet um, that you're going to meet a lot of people in Corona that have, that have lived here and have been here for a long time. And, and I had one of our old economic development directors tell me one time, well, you people never leave. <laughs> like everybody has lived here forever and and it's true it's a great it's place good. it's wonderful people it's a it's a great business out atmosphere mm -hmm. um and uh, I, i'm excited to share it with people you know you one of the things that i really love about this town is i can literally go anywhere whether i'm in my pjs or dressed or whatever with even with a mask on and someone knows my face and knows my name and you know it's a small town but it's a big town and everybody kind of knows each other. So, um, you know, I kind of agree with you with that. I've been here, you know, for quite a while as well. And I've grown to love uh, the town and my neighbors and everything else. Um, and, and Jenny, I'll tell you, if you're a new resident to Corona, people love you. This is not an exclusionary type of place. You see a new resident. I, I see it on next door all the time. Someone oh yeah, welcome, says, hey, welcome. Yeah. Just moved to Corona. And you'll see dozens and dozens of, of messages from, from people from all walks of life all races, religions, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It really is. And, and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, not just a huge fan because I'm, I'm an elected official here, but I'm a huge fan because I'm a resident here and I, I, I love the people of Corona. And we're, it's incredibly diverse as well. We have walks of life, we have from every single walk of life here and we actually do embrace everybody here. And uh, my biggest thing I wanna ask you right now, I have a, my fun question is gonna be for last. Um, but I want to talk about what just came up and we were discussing before about um, new housing and affordable housing for first time home buyers. Um, I know that we were talking on our program last week about in Arizona, they were starting to do some new builds for um, like a rent versus rent to buy type uh, yeah. lease to buy type properties for first time home buyers to get them started in. Um, I noticed that you posted something the other day stating the state was going to mandate 6,800 units to be built in Corona and that the funding is not there. So can you quickly talk about what you guys are talking about and what it is that you guys are thinking about doing regarding that? Sure. Um, so I'll, I'll give the, the 10 second version of um, what this is. So every every nine years, the, the state provides a, um, basically it's a downward um, uh, uh, push of how much housing that each area needs to plan for. Uh, the city of Corona got a 800% increase from the last uh, cycle. It's RE RENA, which stands for Regional Housing Needs Assessment. And uh, uh, the, the governor has mandated basically we have a, a severe housing shortage. And we do. We absolutely do. We have a housing shortage. There's no, no doubts about it. Um, and Southern California got a allocation of 2.3 million uh, plan for 2.3 million homes. The city's allocation was uh, 6,088 uh, allocated across you know, uh, low income, moderate, you know, low, low, very low income, moderate income, above moderate income. Um, we've got about 2,700, if I remember right, in the low and, and very low uh, income categories. And the challenge has been that the city doesn't build housing um, and the state's not funding it, neither is the federal government anymore and hasn't for a long time. There are some state programs that are coming out. They're, they're, the governor has put more, more money in those programs, but just in the, the governor, the money that the governor has put aside just for those low income housing uh, programs, we would use all of it up in the city of Corona just to build our 2,700 units. So um, we're looking to partner and we have in the past partnered with, with uh, companies, local companies, a company called CNC Development and, and, and others to build 
great low income housing. And I tell people when they, you know, think low income housing, they think of, or workforce housing, they think of, you know, tenements and, and slums, but it's not. If you go right behind uh, City Hall, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. You, can, you can't tell it from anything else. And frankly, we're looking to do more of that, but we need, you know, more partners. Um, the city went through a zoning process and as part of RENA, and uh, we spent the last probably six months going through and updating our general plan to uh, include areas that were going to allow um, additional density. And those maps are final now. You can find them on our website. Um, so if there's developers that are looking at, you know, looking at places in Corona, we have those areas already already mapped out. We're going to be rezoning them over the next probably about a year or so. We've reached out to all the owners that, that have those properties. And we're hoping that, that we get some takers and the people that want to uh, build. And, and, and in my opinion, I think if we can do it in places where it makes sense, like, you know, we have density near uh, transportation hubs and, uh, and we have uh, really good infill uh, projects, I'm, I'm all for those. That's fantastic, Wes. That's good information. You know, that's something I was a little concerned about because, you know, when they mandate something, it's like, yeah. okay, how are we going to do this? But it is really, really needed because, you know, our homeless population in Corona has grown as well. And I know that we're trying to fix that problem. But, you know, if there is a lack of housing and um, there isn't much help for those people, or maybe they don't want help, you know, we're trying to figure out the solutions to that. We've done quite a bit on the homeless. The homeless side, we actually have a homeless strategic plan. We have uh, transitional housing that we've identified and we've actually already built. We have 12 units available. And then any new um, affordable housing uh, that we have, we have transitional housing that, that's attached to it as well. So we're, we're, we're doing a great job there. We've actually decreased our homeless population last year by almost 15%. And we're hoping to, to do it by another 20% this year. Um, you know, try and get the people that need help uh, give it to them. And the people that don't, they need to move on somewhere else. Well, that's amazing that you were able to do that during COVID because, you know, you have to really have a not quite hands-on approach, but still have to get it done. Absolutely. So, you know, that's amazing that the city was able to reduce the um, homeless population by that much over COVID. So I want to have a little bit of fun with you. I want to know what are your favorite places to eat and places to have fun in Corona? Well, Okay, so uh, favorite places to eat, <clears throat> you know, the, there's a lot of great choices here. I, I, I tell people all the time, uh, probably my, my favorite place to eat is probably Luna um, over, over by the, uh, the Corona Point, which is, you know, off of, off of Magnolia, very, you know, local family owned company that they're, you know, they're growing quite a bit and they're, they're great people. Um, I'm a big fan of Miguel's. I, I grew up on Miguel's like everybody else here that lived in, in town. Uh, and if you go to Dos Lagos, you get, you know, beautiful ambiance and, and great food. And the family is, is local family that they, you know, talk about a success story. Um, Mr. Vasquez and Mrs. Vasquez started, you know, in Corona in 1975 with a small restaurant, um, uh, not even a high school education and is built it into, uh, uh, you know, they have, I think 30 restaurants, you know, they're, they're fast food restaurants and then also they're, they're big restaurants, but it's one of my favorite places to go. A lot of nostalgia there for me. Um, they love good catered sushi. Our wedding. They actually catered oh. our wedding 30 years ago with enchiladas, did a lot of that. And rice, all you can eat. It was amazing because my husband actually knows Michael, the son. So yeah, yeah Michael and my brother were really good friends in high school as well. So, <laughs> but there's a um, lot of great places to eat. Now, what do you do for fun? Uh, let's see, for fun. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm talking about in Corona, it's hiking. Uh, I yeah. love to go out the skyline, a lot of history there, a road built in 1927 to get people to move. Maybe the idea was actually, it's really funny, I tell people, in 1927, they figured out it was really hard to get to Orange County, so they were going to play a different road, which is they were going to go over the mountain. Uh, it didn't work out that way, but um, it's, it's a great hiking spot now. There's no, no cars allowed there, and it's a very popular um, uh, there's three other, three or four other hiking spots in Corona, and we're doing our trails master plan right now so to get people more access to those. And the other is just, you know, hanging out with my family and um, getting out the summer concerts that we have at Dos Lagos and at City Hall. Um, uh, the city puts on a lot of great events. In fact, we just hired a, a, um, a events coordinator to, to expand those into the city. So you're going to start seeing a lot more uh, programming of that sort of thing. But th those are kind of my favorite things. I love, and I love the holidays, even though we really don't have, you know, uh, weather for the holidays, but our, our um, uh, lighting ceremony at the historic civic center is going to be in a couple weeks. 
um, that's one of my favorite things. Uh, and, and then seeing all the people, I, I can't tell you how, how happy I am to see kids without playing baseball and at the park and, and, um, and these, these great community events. I feel the same way. So I'm gonna pose a question to you, Wes. Sure. What does the statement, the power is now mean to you? Um, I would say the, the power is now in all of us to, uh, to move forward and, and do those things that, that maybe are a little bit scary uh, to take a chance, um, and and to the power is, is yours now to be um, kind to each other, a, a, a smile, a, a handshake. Uh, um, you know, I, I love the the whole idea of you know paying it forward and buying someone else's lunch, or um, and that happens a lot in Corona, and I, and I I love it because it's it's such an unexpected thing. Smiling when I see someone that's not smiling. From babies to 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 you know to old people, I, I can't stop myself from smiling and trying to trying to get into their you know into their line of sight to to have them smile. And I, I wish everybody um, would understand they have that power. You have that power to make other people happy. And the more time that you spend doing that, the better it's going to be for everybody. That was perfect, Wes. Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about down payment assistance with Golden State Finance Authority with Carolyn Sanceri. Many Californians fear that they will not be able to pay their rent next month. Financial education and literacy are the catalyst for relief. So what resources are out there? A State of California program connects you with a HUD certified housing counselor who can assist you on your financial education journey with no cost to you. Call today at 1-800-569-4287. Again, that is 1-800-569-4287. For those of you just joining us, welcome to the Homebuyer Town Hall Corona. My name is Jenny Gonzalez. Please go to thepowersnow.com and check out our Realtor and Homebuyer seminars coming soon online. Register today and get your seat. I promise you will not be disappointed. And now we're going to hear from Carolyn Sanceri from the Golden State Finance Authority. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you, Jenny. It's great to be here. I'm excited to delve into the down payment assistance programs from Golden State Finance Authority. The way that I like to um, discuss the topic with real estate agents is really from a perspective of you not losing sales, not losing transactions because of someone's financial um, position. And oftentimes a real estate agent is the first person to kind of find out where someone is in terms of what kind of resources they have. And so you as a real estate agent can be the link to programs that can make a difference, that can maybe get them into a house sooner than they thought possible, maybe give them more purchasing power. So imagine as a real estate agent, what can down payment assistance do for you and your clients? Golden State Finance Authority has been offering home buyer assistance programs in California for almost 30 years. We've been able to help over 83,000 individuals and families to purchase homes and the vast majority of the time, it's because of the down payment and closing cost assistance that we provide. 
we've been able to provide over $634 million in down payment and closing cost assistance money in California. Now we are a public agency, a quasi-governmental agency, and that gives us the ability to take your standard mortgage products that we've all heard of and then couple them with down payment, closing cost assistance, and flexible guidelines to allow for people to get into homes maybe sooner than they thought possible. But when people think of down payment assistance, whether it's a lender or a home buyer or a real estate agent, oftentimes they hesitate to look into it because they're worried about some of the things that may actually make it more challenging. So let's start off by just talking about the flexibility and, and maybe breaking some of the myths out there around down payment assistance. When it comes to Golden State Finance Authority's programs, we, um, we really focus on accessibility. So they are not limited to first time home buyers. So whether somebody is returning to home buying, they owned a home in the past, or maybe they're a first time home buyer, or maybe they own a property today but they're gonna be purchasing a new residence that they're moving into as an owner-occupied residence. And I don't mean new property. I just mean they're gonna be moving into a new home to them and the cash resources to get in with down are short. So again, no first-time home buyer requirement on the GSFA programs. In addition, the down payment assistance that our programs provide is up to five, excuse me, up to 7% of the loan amount. And that's a lot of money. We're gonna look at an example of how much cash that really can give them. The income limits are extremely flexible. In fact, we don't even have income limits on government loans, but we'll dive into that a little bit more as well as some of the qualifying guidelines. But I like to start off with dispelling the myth that you have to be uh, per, you have to have perfect credit or that um, you can't have any debts or liabilities. It's very flexible. FICO scores are allowed as low as 620 and even debt to income ratios up to 50% can qualify. Variety of different financing options and the programs are available throughout the state of California. On your screen is an example of utilizing our Open Doors program to purchase a house at the maximum loan that we can actually finance through the program. The loan amount that the maximum is 548,250. So I'm using a scenario of the highest amount of purchase price, the highest sales price on a home that would allow you to only use the down payment and closing cost assistance from Golden State Finance Authority to buy that house, okay? So this example is a home of 565,000. They have cash of their own, they would be able to purchase higher than this. If they had resources to cover the closing costs, they could pur purchase higher than this by using all of the money we provide towards the principal. But this is an example, $565,000, and that um, allows them 7% or up to 7% in assistance. That comes to $38,363, and leaving them with a mortgage loan of $548.50. Now, $38,000, imagine that. That is enough to cover the minimum required on down for a conventional loan, a conventional loan that, that only requires 3% down. That's enough to cover that $16,950 in down. And it leaves them with another $21,000 for closing costs. They have some cash of their own. They can apply that additional $21,000, apply the entire $38,000 coming from Golden State Finance Authority towards the transaction. And that would allow them to purchase probably up to about 580,000. And just showing you an example here um, of how the affordability can be uh, maximized through using down payment and closing cost assistance. Now we have two different down payment programs. The first one is called Platinum. It's been around a little bit longer. It's been around since 2010. It's our most popular one. And the reason is because for certain occupations in law enforcement, firefighting, and all the support staff in, um, in schools, whether public or private, and within the medical and healthcare industries, we provide the down payment assistance for this program, Platinum, as a gift on the first day that escrow closes. 
So they start out with equity in their home on day one and don't have to pay back that assistance. Now, outside of these specialized occupations, the rest of the borrowers are getting the down payment assistance as a 0% second mortgage instead, and it's forgiven after three years. So instead of a gift on day one, the other borrowers will be getting a, a second loan that has no interest, no payments, and after 36 months is completely forgiven. And that's what I think makes this program the most attractive to home buyers. But when you want to refer someone to a GSFA participating lender, the lender is going to dive into the nuances of these two programs and what's the right fit for them. And I'm just covering some of the highlights of these two programs. The Platinum program allows um, 640 FICO score on conventional loans, 660 on FHA, and as low as 640 for VA and USDA mortgages. And then you'll notice that the um, maximum debt to income ratios are around 45 and sometimes up to 50% um, when the borrower has a little bit higher FICO. Now the second program is geared towards providing more in assistance. Platinum was able to provide 5%, Open Doors provides up to 7%. So the borrowers that don't have down payment money, but they also don't have closing cost money, sometimes being able to get up to 7% is going to be a better fit. This program might be the better fit. Now, the assistance provided for the Open Doors program is provided as part gift, up to half of it as a gift, and the other half as what we call a um, 0% second mortgage that's due and payable when they sell the property or they refinance that mortgage or the mortgage loan itself is paid off. So there is a repayment of part of the assistance that's provided for this open doors program. But again, when you have a borrower that doesn't have a lot of cash resources and they can qualify for a mortgage today, this allows them to get into the property today to start building equity, start building financial security, knowing that the assistance that was provided to help them, up to half of it is completely forgiven and the other half they would pay back at some future date without any interest on it. The FICO scores that are allowed for the open doors program become a little bit more flexible. We can go down to 620 FICOs and up to 55% on debt to income ratios, um, depending on the underwriting approval. Now, all of the programs are for, both of the programs are for the purchase of a primary residence. It's gonna be a residence that they own or occupy, but the programs can go up to four units. And maybe you've never considered that. You have a borrower who has this picture of the perfect little property that they're looking for, but you know that we don't have the inventory out there and that they may have to start thinking outside the box. So consider how a borrower might actually be in a really good position by buying a duplex or a triplex. Up to four units can be financed with our down payment and closing cost assistance programs. All of the mortgages, whether they are government loans, FHA, VA, or USDA, or a conventional loan, they are 30-year fixed rate interest, and the maximum loan amount, as I mentioned, on the mortgage, the first mortgage, is going to be $548,250. Now, sometimes it's going to be really um, advantageous for a borrower to go with conventional financing, and that's because those borrowers in a lower income bracket that can qualify for conventional financing are gonna get more attractive pricing, meaning better interest rates on the program. They're gonna get better coverage, um, better costs on their MI because they don't have to have as much mortgage insurance and they'll have a little bit more flexibility in the down payment options. But I don't want you to think that you have to be low income, you don't. Um, a borrower can qualify for FHA, VA, and USDA loans, government loans, no matter what the income is. We don't have an income limit. Now, you do have to refer to the agency guidelines. So if there is an USDA income limit for a property, that might apply. We don't apply any income limits. And for conventional financing, our income limits are really high. 
There's an example here on the screen of San Bernardino, Los Angeles and Riverside County. And as you can see, it's a really high income. It's like 162,000 um, that they can still qualify for down payment and closing cost assistance. As I mentioned, there's some MI advantages, some mortgage insurance advantages because the coverage that they need on a conventional loan for the borrowers in a lower income bracket at 80% of area median income and below, their coverage level actually drops drastically. But you know, this is where the loan officer gets involved and what's gonna be the best fit for them. Now, as a real estate agent, I get a lot of questions about whether or not accessing or referring somebody to a down payment assistance program is gonna make the entire escrow um, slow down or make it more challenging, you know, and how can they reassure a seller or a buyer that down payment assistance is a good option that, that you know, a seller sh should, should not hesitate to take an offer with somebody who's getting down payment assistance. One of the biggest factors has to do with how we don't have any compliance review. We leave all of the actual mortgage loan processing and um, making sure that the borrower qualifies, we leave that to the lender. And so the only step where a lender is, is working directly with Golden State Finance Authority is at the time that they lock in the interest rate. And that when they do lock in the interest rate, they obtain a commitment for the down payment and closing cost money as well. And that step is really important. But once that lock is done, they are given those documents from Golden State Finance Authority, and then they go through the mortgage loan just like they normally would, which means your lenders, your GSFA lenders can process um, down payment assistance programs in 30 days. I was on a call just the other day and we had a lender who was saying that they could do 22 days. So keep in mind that just because it's a down payment assistance program, when you work with GSFA's program, it's not going to slow down escrow. There isn't gonna be an additional compliance review step or additional forms that have to be turned in or a package that has to be reviewed that you then think could actually um, cause a problem during escrow. And the qualifying guidelines are so few. You yourself, if you had the ability, could, could talk to the borrower and mention the FICO kind of, the FICO limitations or FICO requirements of 620 or above or the DTI. You know, on our website, we have the income limits for conventional financing. So you're able to look at that. And then, you know, knowing the needs of the borrower, get them in touch with a lender that can really look further into their situation and figure out which program will be best. But I don't want you to take my word for it. Here on the screen is some testimonials from people who have actually written in letters thanking GSFA for the program, for getting in them into houses. And as you can see, you're looking at a borrower here that's getting 13,000, another that got 18,000, um, people who were renting for years and years and even during COVID have been able to purchase a home and move into it. Now, how do you get started? As a, as a real estate agent, it's really important that you work with a GSFA participating lender, especially the ones who are experienced in GSFA programs, because they're gonna understand the guidelines. They're going to you know, have a process in place for locking in the loan, rate and getting that commitment letter, and they're gonna stay in contact with you. That is really important. Um, and so what I suggest for all of the real estate agents is to develop a one-on-one -on -one relationship with lenders and loan officers themselves so that you can do referrals the minute you find out that a borrower has a need for down payment and closing cost assistance. Our lenders are gonna be the one to furnish the interest rates and to provide the um, applicable uh, APRs. They're the ones that are gonna go through the application, the mortgage loan application process and check eligibility, and then determine whether it's the platinum program or the open doors program that's gonna be the best fit for the borrower. We don't expect real estate agents to memorize all the guidelines, but understanding the key features of the program, understanding that they're more flexible then most people think that they're not limited to first-time home buyers. That's the first step. Because once 
you believe in the value of these programs, you can then educate your borrowers and link them to GSFA participating lenders. Now, as Eric mentioned, um, we have done some videos on the website. And so if you would like a more in-depth uh, look at either the Platinum or the Open Doors program, we highly encourage that you visit the website and um, look at the program pages. There's the videos on our YouTube pages as well. Um, and also on the Power Is Now uh, website as well. These videos really dive into how the programs work. There's even a video with um, a couple who have used the Platinum program and share their experience. First Bank is one of our participating lenders. You have Eric with us today, so I highly encourage reaching out to him. His contact information is here. Thank you for joining me. Well, everyone, I can't believe it. I just finished my first show on the Power Is Now TV. I hope the information was beneficial. If I could be of any assistance to you on buying or selling a home, please contact me at 951-316-0374. My name is Jenny Gonzalez with Kellerwinds Corona. My license number is 01249788. And I've been licensed since 1998. And my website is jennygsellshomes.com. And everybody have a blessed day. The Power Is Now Media is worldwide with growing audience of future home buyers, investors, builders, developers, real estate agents, and brokers. The Power Is Now Media is well positioned to increase awareness and produce results for our growing roster of advertising partners. An advertisement on any of our platforms is the right step toward reaching and communicating key brand messages to a targeted network of individuals, families, and communities interested in housing. Our content areas include feature stories and profiles on successful real estate agents, business owners, government, and community leaders. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, real estate, and programming guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate and mortgage news and information from industry experts. VIP agents are able to feature listings each week. The Power Is Now TV radio podcast features weekly shows that include Homebuyers Town Hall, Real Estate Roundtable, VIP Agent Spotlight, and so much more. Each week, VIP agents have opportunities to be featured guests on the shows. VIP agents can discuss and showcase houses, neighborhoods, and provide brief introduction. The interviews are unlimited 10 to 15 minutes on each current listing. This product alone separates you from your competition. The Power Is Now delivers to you market update interview to promote listing weekly, promotional biographical video, co-host a bi-monthly homebuyers town hall show, featured subject matter expert on real estate roundtable show, the Power Is Now Program Guide e-magazine. The Power Is Now National e-magazine. Article writing and blogging. Social media content customization. Inclusion and press releases. Graphic design services. Business and performance coaching. Technology support. Referrals. Lead generation opportunities and management support.